Are you ready to immerse yourself in healing rain? That is the topic we're going to be discussing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. Do you want to go deeper in your faith even while you're on the go? No matter how busy the season you're in, Access More has a library of faith-based podcasts to help you grow spiritually. With podcasts from Christian thought leaders such as Christine Kane, Lisa Harper, Taryn Wells, and Bob Goff, you can hear podcasts on religion, culture, family, entertainment, and so much more. Access More gives you a safe space to find inspiring conversations about faith. Start listening today at accessmore.com. Today, I am very excited to have a new guest with me, someone that I have met from her podcast, Healing Rain. She is Sue Detweiler, and she is the author of the new book, Healing Rain. She's an international speaker and founder of an international healing ministry called Life Bridge Global. Welcome, Sue. I am so thrilled to have you on Flourishment, and I can't wait to talk about this topic with you today. Well, I'm excited to be here, Tina. I know that God is advancing his kingdom and he does that even through our conversations. So tell us, Sue, how did you get interested in this ministry of healing? This isn't something that someone stumbles across or decides to go into lightly. It's usually a journey. So can you talk to the listeners about how the Lord brought you to this place of a feeling led to deliver healing through your ministry? Well, I, I believe that Jesus Christ walked on this earth as a healer. You know, every single day he was laying hands on the sick and they were recovering, but he was also healing from the inside out. You know, he was healing broken hearts and he was healing broken relationships. And so really the ministry of Jesus Christ is all about healing. And I, I think to become involved in a ministry of healing, often it means you've gone through suffering. You've gone through pain. You've gone through loss. You've hit walls in your physical health where you needed God as healer to show up in your life. And all of those things would be true of me. So I get the sense just from having talked with you a few times that you have a very gentle and kind and nurturing spirit. How does that play into bringing people to a place where they can receive healing? Well, I do believe that introducing people to healing is introducing them to Jesus. And there's something about focusing on the person of Jesus. And we know even from studies, you know, when you are in worship and prayer and the presence of God moves in the room, there are times that people are healed just by his presence entering through worship and music and songs. And it, part of knowing about Jesus is knowing that it's his very nature and his character to heal. It's not something that we have to beg him for. You know, the truth of the word is that by his stripes, we are healed. And his whole mission statement was about healing. So I believe that healing is something that we simply immerse ourselves under the presence of, of Jesus to receive our healing. And so many people do beg for healing. They go to places, they ask for prayers for healing. What might be some things that are in the way of them actually receiving that healing? If they're going to places where people are gathered, and Jesus said, wherever two or more are gathered, there am I also. His presence is there. But what would prevent someone from experiencing that healing when they go there? I just know somebody who's listening may have that question in their minds and their hearts. Why haven't I received my healing? I think that's a wonderful question and being real and raw before God. And, and, and by the way, you know, I'm going to hold up my book. Part of what God does through healing and through healing journeys is that he often goes deeper into our own journey. 
Like sometimes God shows up miraculously and it's an instantaneous healing. Often it is a journey of healing. And whenever it's a journey, then it's all about the transformation that's going to happen in our hearts and our souls. And so I outline different things that can be blocks, but also I outline ways to position ourselves to receive healing. So for example, unforgiveness is one of those blocks that if we have unforgiveness in our hearts towards God, towards ourselves, towards others, we can literally make ourselves sick through unforgiveness. And so removing unforgiveness is one of those areas. Doubt, unbelief, fear, you know, those are all stumbling blocks. And, and we don't always realize it, but fear, for example, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. We don't realize that sometimes we're tapping into a demonic spirit, a spirit of fear. And so there are some healings that, that people are delivered from a spirit of infirmity. And I share one of those stories in my book of, of someone who went through a trauma and her sickness began with that trauma. And so I think it's so interesting because you're a therapist, Tina, and, and so you're all about healing. And, and the reality is we're such complex human beings that I believe God heals all at the same time, body, mind, soul, spirit. And it's finding out what is that initial entrance What's the root? And if you're able to get about the root, you're able to really receive the fruit of healing in your life. That is so profound. And I love that you're getting at the heart of what could be some solutions for people that need to experience healing. So let's dig into that a little bit more about the things that they need to identify in order to invite Jesus into those spaces that they may not realize are causing an issue, a barrier to their healing. So one you said is trauma. That is a potential place. So one of the things that we should do is just really allow the spirit to search our hearts for places of trauma? Is there anything else that we need to kind of look through and scan for and identify within ourselves as we're coming before Jesus to immerse ourselves in his presence? Another thing is unbelief. Unbelief is all around us. And you think about unbelief, it's any way that you are doubting what the word of God says. Now, what I want to be careful of here is that we live in a fallen world. And so presently, we do not have, there's, there's no one that ministers healing that has a 100% success rate. I mean, the reality is the 100% uh, success of total healing, if it doesn't happen on this earth, it happens in heaven. And, and so how to be able to deal with the fact because there's factual evidence that here on earth, there's suffering, there's pain. And how to just realize, okay, this is a truth, but it's not the total truth. Because one thing that can set people up for sickness, for example, is to become a victim in their minds. And that happened with me after I had returned from Brazil and my GI tract was contaminated and I got really, really sick. And when you've been sick and it goes from being something that's recent to becoming chronic, then what can happen is your daily symptoms become your reality. They become your focus. They become your meditation. So replacing that victim mentality with a victor mentality takes a replacing of all of that negative thought process. So for example, if you've been sick for a long time and you go to the doctor and it takes you 15, 20 minutes to tell your story, then part of it is every time you're telling your story, you're reliving 
this aspect in your life. And that goes through how we process with our brain, how we process with our emotions. And you can make yourself really depressed really quickly. One of the things that I try to do is target our focus on the word of God, that you will magnify what you meditate on. And when you start to magnify the truth and the reality that Jesus is our healer, all of a sudden it takes you from that victim mentality and it brings you into the truth of who you are in Jesus Christ and, and what your inheritance is. That is a huge shift itself. And when you begin to believe that reality, more than your symptoms, there's a shift in your body to line up with the truth of God's word. I've just seen it happen over and over again. The enemy wants to make us a victim, but Jesus has made us a victor. And so receiving it is positioning ourselves under his healing love. Can you give us one example that illustrates what you're talking about? Because this is just so profound. I know that people are wanting to hear more about this kind of healing that you are experiencing, that you've seen, that you brought through your mission programs. Listeners can go to my website, sue.weiler.com and download seven keys of divine healing. And in those seven keys, I talk about the truth of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us and how that impacts our healing. And then I, I go through and I've written out declarative prayers over every system of our body. You know, you think about our bodily systems and God has made our body to heal. And sometimes we get so stuck in the suffering and the pain of this world, we don't realize. Um, so I give some written prayers of how to thank God, you know, thank God for the creation of every system in our body, you know, our endocrine system, or, you know, they have been made, our systems have been made to really, they've been marked with divine healing. And so, I think that's one step is beginning to pray the prayers. Another practical step that I outline in the book has to do with communion. You know, Jesus said, as often as you remember this, take communion. And I think we've removed that to be a church when really communion was about breaking bread and drinking wine in homes. And so one of the things that I do on a daily basis is I take communion at home and I pray for the healing of my children, my grandchildren. I've provided some written prayers in the book that people can do. And part of it is Jesus has already done this on the cross. We're remembering, you know, the goodness that his body was broken for us, that his blood was shed for us. And I began doing this, Tina, when I had a, a phone call from my daughter. She, she had lost a baby, had a baby, and then she was hemorrhaging. And she was headed to the hospital. She was 95% sure that she'd lost this baby. And I remember praying for her. And then when Wayne got up, my husband, we took communion together and we claimed the life of our eighth grandchild. And, and it was something that we claimed it based on what Jesus had already done for us on the cross. And, and I'll never forget. I mean, it was like hours later and I'm getting this text that the baby was completely fine. It was a, something called a subcreonic hemorrhage or something like that. And, um, and she carried Johnny Allen full term. He is our eighth grandchild. And I really believe that God healed him in her womb. You know, he's able to do that, but taking communion on a regular basis and taking it with faith that he's already done this for us. So that's a very practical daily step that, that can change our mindset and our emotional state of receiving Jesus as healer. 
I cannot wait to get into more of these practical steps and dive into some more wonderful, rich wisdom that you have to offer on this subject. But for now, I would love for you to share with the audience how they can get their hands on your amazing book and connect with your ministry. I would absolutely love to connect with you. Um, My website is sue.weiler, D-E-T-W-E-I-L-E-R.com. And you're able to download resources there. There is a video course that goes along with this book that I think the teaching will help you in your healing journey. And you can even lead a study. That's a great way because you develop your own healing team. You know, you support each other going through. If you are interested in seeing how God heals in the nation, my other website is lifebridge.global. And we have been seeing God move internationally through healing. In this second portion of our conversation with the amazing Sue Detweiler, I want to get into some more practical tips and some wonderful, rich details. You were talking in the first half of our conversation about how what we say about ourselves and our lives makes a difference. Can you dive into that a little bit more about what we can say of ourselves that defines how we see and receive our identity? Well, the good news is that if you know Jesus Christ, then you've already been adopted into this global family. You already have a father who created you and imprinted your identity from him. And and he's given you a blueprint for that identity. And it's really the word of God. And so a, a book like mine, Healing Rain, can really help you get a hold of that blueprint and apply it to your life. One of the things that I believe is what we meditate on, we will magnify in our lives. So if we meditate on our sickness, we we rehearse and remember all the things that are wrong with our body. And, and by the way, I don't mean we should deny fact or act like it isn't there. I, I don't think that's authentic. I think an authentic way to walk as a Christian is to learn how to speak in complete sentences. And by that, I mean, if we're talking about how we feel and what's happened, it's like, you know, I've really had this struggle, comma. I'm so thankful that Jesus is my healer and I'm in the process of this journey of healing. And there's something about that. You're reframing what you're going through. And one of the things I'll ask people when they've gone through a crisis, Tina, I don't know, maybe you've done this as well, but I'll say to them, who's on your healing team? And I'll wait for a response. And there's a reason I've done that because so many times when you've gone through crisis, you go into this survival mode and that is framed. And, and often the doctor will tell you about a sickness, like an autoimmune sickness, for example. This you're going to have all your life. You just manage it. That's what the doctor says. But statistically, you know, I had Hashimoto's thyroidism, but God healed my thyroid. So I do not fit that statistic. You, do you see what I mean? Where there's there's aspects about a reality of what we face, and yet God's reality is bigger than that. And when we start to believe the report of God through his word more than the report of man, it helps us have major breakthroughs that are turning points in our lives such an important point about defining ourselves by whose we are and what our body is under the authority of, not under the authority of the sickness, but under the authority of the creator and our redeemer. And that is so powerful. People don't realize how powerful their words are over the functioning of their body. Your mind is what runs your body. So it is physical, it is spiritual, it is emotional, it's all together. So that's really, really strong truth scientifically and spiritually that all works together, isn't it? 
It sure does. And, and I think one area that people do not think about in our modern world, I know when I went to seminary, I, I went to a seminary that did not believe that demons were real. You know, it was more a result of choices or things like that. And yet the longer I've lived, I have seen that demonic uh, forces can oppress you. One friend of mine that shares her story in Healing Rain really was impacted by a spirit of trauma, a spirit of infirmity. And, and she had such severe cases of gastrointestinal issues that she was changed. You know, part of her intestines were taken out. And yet she did all of the surgery, everything she could to be healed and she wasn't healed. And she was at the point of it. Life was so difficult for her. She couldn't get out of her house. She couldn't go anywhere. She couldn't go to church. You know, I mean, it was just a really hard reality. And she had this friend that basically said, Hey, I'm picking you up. There's a healing evangelist and we are going to that meeting. And if you don't get in the car, I'm going to put my hand on the horn and it's going to blast. You know, your neighbors are not going to like it. You are getting in this car. And I, I'm thinking this is a good person to have on your healing team. And the result for her is that she had so embraced her identity as a victim, and she had all the things from the medical community to confirm that. But when push came to shove and she's in this meeting, she was delivered of a spirit of trauma. And, you know, sometimes that, that demonic spirit oppresses us and takes over our life. And do you know that she was completely healed, completely healed. And, and sometimes we don't realize, and, and by the way, you do see this in international communities that, that sometimes what has broken into the spiritual realm um, is a demonic spirit. And you definitely see it in Jesus's ministry that there are times that people were set free and healed at the same time. And just learning how to shut the door to the enemy and how to open the door to God. So what are some signs that this is a spiritually oppressive situation is it that there's a pattern that continues for a period of time? And if you can get rid of one thing, it comes back this other way. Is that one of the, the signs that this may be more than just a physical issue and it's manifestation of something more demonic? Yeah, I think a chronic, you know, when it becomes chronic, you want to look at, okay, what are all the possible solutions? Now, what's difficult about this, and I want to take a moment here for listeners, Jesus is not going to blame you for sickness. It's not your fault that you're sick. I just, that needs to be really, really clear. And when we talk about the demonic, it doesn't mean that you don't have physical symptoms that are very real and verifiable medically. You know, so that's really important to talk about. I mean, this struggle is a difficult one. I believe that part of what we can do is look at the fruit of what's happening. So, for example, an example of demonization could be the isolation that comes when you're completely isolated from the community of God, from being able to go to church you know, those, those types of things, they may happen in short seasons when something has happened in your life, but overall God's made us to be in community. So that can be a signpost of, of that isolation. I think whenever you have that, your words and your thinking and your meditation is constantly negative where there's a hopelessness, there's a despair, 
that can be a sign where you literally feel oppressed, where it's like you feel pushed down, shoved down. And those are all types of things. The enemy just doesn't play fair. And most of the time, Tina, what I'll see is there's an interspersing of inner healing that's needed and deliverance and physical healing. So for example, if there's unforgiveness in your heart, that's a doorway that you can leave open for the enemy to come in. So one place that I personally have been delivered of, I had been abused as a child. And so I had a real area in my life where a spirit of rejection had attached to how I viewed things, how I looked at things. And I've, that's one area when you have been abused, I've seen that over and over. It's like a spirit of rejection can cling to you and you have enough factual evidence to support your view of reality. But one of the things about the truth, Jesus says in John 8, 32, that he's the truth and the truth sets you free. A lot of times the enemy will set up fact, 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 but it's not the overall truth. The truth is a person and that's Jesus. And that's why Jesus can come in and trump all this reality. <laughs> And I love it when he does. I love it when he breaks through and people's eyes are healed or ears are opened or autoimmune areas are completely healed. God's just so wonderful and his heart is to heal you. So can you talk a little bit about what you're offering through your new book to immerse people in healing rain and help them come to accept all of these truths and experience full multi-level healing, deliverance, renewal, all of those things? What can they expect to get from your new book? Well, first, I would encourage you to get this book, but also get it for a healing team. Maybe there's different ones of you that are struggling with autoimmune, or maybe you've been struggling even in your emotional health or your internal reality, or maybe you just want to know who Jesus is as healer. I would encourage you to get the book, but then invite others to get the book and do a group study. And part of what is so effective about that, not only do you have videos that you can watch either on your own or together of teaching about how Jesus is a healer that's additional to the book, but you also have questions and prompts, things that you're able to journal through. And I was able to I've used this in my doctoral study, actually, and I have been able to take a group of people through this and the, the type of victory that they're getting in areas that have been, they've just been stuck in, you know, they've needed a breakthrough. They needed, they needed a pathway. And there's something about how God uses community and a healing team that you can end up ministering healing to each other. Can this be done with people who gather on Zoom or do you recommend that people do this in person if they can? Absolutely. Well, I mean, the world is so different, isn't it? I mean, sometimes we have friends that are around and you can definitely do this on Zoom. Absolutely no problem. You could do that. You could have a group in your home. You could take a study break for your work that you go through it with a couple of people. Now, of course, you can go through it alone. And I believe that that you will have a major breakthrough in your life just by going through the journaling, the prompts, meditating on the scripture. I can guarantee that if you apply the word of God to your life, you are going to get a breakthrough. It's just who Jesus is. But I, I do believe that there's going to be a healing wave that begins to start in your life where you're starting at a certain point and it's like you, you begin to have a new 
understanding of who you are in Christ, what your inheritance is in him, and how he's your healer in a very practical way. And I don't know, I feel compassionate because when people are sick and suffering, oh God, we need a breakthrough. We need Jesus as healer to be real in our lives. I cannot wait for everyone listening to get their hands on your book and stay connected with you. Can you list your website link and all the places where you are able to reach out and connect with listeners and viewers and how they can get a hold of your book? Well, this book has launched and it's, I think it's in almost every bookstore around. So of course you're able to get it on Amazon or all the major book retailers. My website is suedetweiler.com. And if you know how to spell my name, you can find me easily. D-E-T-W-E-I-L-E-R is my last name. And if you desire to download seven steps, of uh, seven keys to divine healing, you can do that at my website, suedoutweiler.com. And you can also find access to the video course as well. I hope that all of you listening will join me in accessing these amazing resources so that you can be fully equipped to fulfill God's best in and through your life. And of course, I hope that you subscribe and come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be found on the Edify app.